Mike Mulligan owned a steam shovel, Obusiris Ironworks Model 50B, but he called it Murray Ann. His affection for the machine was out of proportion with social norms. Together they helped scrub away the natural beauty of the American frontier, yet at the same time, the beauty of their love blossomed. But then came a grotesque parade of new shovels, stronger, faster, and powered by diesel motors. The inexorable march of technology could not be held back. Steam shovels were being abandoned in horrific mass graves of rusted, twisting metal. This was a harsh new reality for Mike, who had no significant human relationships. Fleeing the urban progress they helped to create like seeds in the night, they head for Popperville, a small town preparing to build a new town hall. The local authorities react with disbelief, then Mike tells them he and Marianne can dig the cellar for the town hall in a single day. They protest it would take a hundred men a week to do such a job. It is worth noting that Mike Mulligan tells everyone he meets only two things about Marianne, that she can dig as much in a day as a hundred men can dig in a week, and that she works faster and better than people are watching. Both will come back to haunt him. Mike and Marianne are given the job, but what of the hundred local men who could have used the week's verse of work? What will they tell their families? They begin at sunup the next day. Throughout the day, a crowd grows. Everyone in Popperville has heard Mike's crazy bet that if they don't finish, they won't get paid. The smell of blood is in the air. Watching them work is like watching a public execution in slow motion. It is rapturous. Mike pushes Mary Ann to the edge of exhaustion. The infernal smoke of industry blots out the sun. Suddenly it is quiet. The dirt and the smoke settle down, and there is the cellar, all finished. A jubilant cry rings up from the crowd. This is the madness of crowds. If a failure cannot be found to be jeered, they will just as soon celebrate a winner. Whatever everyone else is doing. But there is a problem. They have neglected to leave themselves a ramp on which to drive out. Like gangsters in an American movie, it is like they have dug their own grave. Mike seems doomed by his own hubris, and he has doomed Marianne as well. She is like a beaten dog, who still loves her master, because he is all she has ever known. Now a child who has been watching suggests, why don't we leave Marianne in the cellar and build the new town hall above her? Convert her into the furnace and let Mike Mulligan be the janitor. Also, Mike could easily climb out of the hole and go on with his life. He cannot bear to live without his machine wife Marianne and so he accepts this terrible compromise. With that, Mary Ann, whose only wish was to continue digging with Mike, was betrayed by that same man. She would be turned from a noble shovel into a lowly boiler. They built the new town hall above her, entombing her within. At this point in the story, the author encourages her readers to visit the new town hall in Popperville, but the story was copyrighted in 1939, the town hall would now be far from new, and Mike Mulligan is almost certainly dead. A once proud man, he spends the end of his days in darkness, living in a cellar, doing menial work, surrounded by his guilt and Mary Ann's twisted, deformed remains. This has been Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. I'm Werner Herzog. Good night, mein kleines Feeble.